Thanks for still staying with us here on the AM show. We did inform you that we will be giving you an update on Ghana's first infectious disease isolation treatment center uh, being put up by the private sector fund. Well, fortunately, we've got Senor Hossi uh, who will help us with where we are today. Maybe help clarify a few things. I'm sure you've seen some things trending uh, on social media in terms of who started this development? Whose credit? To whose credit uh, do we uh, do we owe this? Senor, good morning to you. I can see you there. Thanks for joining us here on the AM show. Hello, Senor. Can you say that good morning again? Good morning, Mama V. Yes, good morning to you. You're and good. Good morning to, to viewers and people of Ghana. Great. We've seen some pictures on social media. Where are we with the project? Is it done? We are. What we have, what we call technically uh, a practical completion, and we are ready for commissioning. Hopefully this Friday on the twenty fourth, um, in the afternoon, and we'll be sending a circular um, to reflect that. Okay. Explain again. So as we see the building now, what is in there? What What is it? Okay. So what you have in the building today. Is a 105 bed, 105 bed um, infectious disease center. This comprises um, 21 beds for ICU intensive care. So we have a whole intensive care unit which we have dedicated to the Bank of Ghana for the support that they gave us. They were our largest donors, and um, we also have 79 beds for moderate and semi-severe cases. And you have three beds for triaging, and you have two beds uh, for, for, for isolation. So that comprises the entire bed structure for the facility. It also has um, a level 2.5, and I think by um, the end of the month, we should be moving it up to a level three laboratory, which will be equivalent to what you have at Noguchi to help support the country with infectious disease management. It also has um, equipment in all the facilities. Every single bed has its necessary digital vital sign monitors, patient monitors in the ICU, um, and some highly intensive care units also having the ventilators. It's also equipped um, with um, some uh, semi-mog, so called a cadaver um, for transit expired um, uh, patients as well. We also have a staff block that's supposed to help manage and administer the activities within the main um, treatment um, facility. The staff block has offices, it has um, um, a lab monitoring facility as well. It has a staff lounge, which is quite modern with this kitchenette. And it has a waiting lounge, as you can see today, and this has been named after the CD, current CDS, Mr. Obi Aqua, for the support he really gave the project. Um, as, as one of the partners um, to the project, the Ghana Armed Forces was. So do we also have the built environment professionals also being a part um, of the project. Um, the facility is also equipped with an 800 kVA generator, supposed to provide standby power. Uh, currently, it is providing the primary power because um, ACG is yet to supply the facility or connect the facility to the national grid. We anticipate and hope that um, we'll wake up to their responsibility and um, support the project before the commissioning on the 24th. But we are yet to actually see much um, in, that, in that regard. So we are largely good to go. The facility also is equipped with a medical gas um, facility, so a plant. So we're able to produce medical gases to support patients. Mm. And it also has oxygen manifolds that would enable um, patients access oxygen without physically carrying in uh, what they call the cylinders, the gas cylinders, that alone can also feed into the infections that you may have in an infectious disease center. So we're keeping everything outside. The facility has three, in fact, four decontamination points to minimize medical contamination. So we don't have health workers getting contaminated. Mm. The routine is very well structured with walls totally insulated, both 
at the root level and the main wall level. Okay. So we've insulated the entire building mm. to minimize the cost of energy or the cost of the, the energy requirement in managing or operating the facility. Mm. It is fully climate uh, climate controlled with um, the air coming in properly treated and also UV radiation use also treat air going out to minimize or eliminate the risk of having infections um, leave the mm. building. Mm. Senor, for those of us who have been following this project I'm from... I'm a bit cocky. I actually got back from SAD not too long ago. Mm. We've been working for other nights. So. Okay, great. Uh, I was just going to say that for those of us who have been following the project from the beginning, we know that this is the COVID-19 private sector fund uh, initiative. Yeah. Explain how this all started, how uh, the thinking came about, and you know why we decided to even hit the ground in the first place. Uh, this uh, the whole fund started by a conversation by three friends, um, and having other friends also buy into the same idea, and forming up forming the fund. So a little conversation by myself, Mr. Dfa, and Mr. Oting JC, um, together with uh, Mr. Kweku Bediako, and then later a few others to buy into the same vision and and, and, um, and concept. We just found it necessary to come up with a mechanism to deliver a swift response to the challenges that government was likely going to face. So it's a private sector-led fund. Mm. It's a, a fund open to both public sector and private sector operatives, individuals, the entire citizenry, and international donors as well. Mm. We conceptualized it, engaged government. They were OK with it, but also later announced their own fund um, and still give us a blessing to proceed with our own fund mm. as well. And we launched it on the 29th of um of march in the premises of fidelity bank and um we quickly moved into action um with all the trustees coming together 11 of us and governance structures involving fidelity bank echo bank stanley ghana limited kpmg and ernst and young we built a very transparent um system a fund that people could really have confidence in and the first of our initiative was the feed a car your project we're the first to actually hit the road and, and come up with some social intervention during the lockdown. We served 144,000 meals in Accra and Kumasi over a two-week period. And the um, government also stepped in. Our whole idea is to actually initiate things in support of what government is doing. Mm. We engage the Ghana Medical Association, the ministry, the health service, to really understand where the gaps are in this entire fight. Prior to starting this project, we, 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 we just realized that, I mean, what we had been touted at the time as, as um, COVID bed capacity at Ridge was, I think, just four or eight beds. And that was obviously inadequate. We also realized in our engagements with government and the Minister of Health in particular, that um, one of the key gaps was the absence of an infectious disease center in the country. Mm. We started with different options, looking at the field hospital. That's how come we ended up having conversations with the military mm. and also realized the supply chain to deliver the tent hospitals, which are all makeshift facilities that are also semi-dangerous because they also facilitate cross infections. Mm. All right. It's still going to take us about three months to deliver. So, so we said, look, we mm -hmm. may as well just get and build Ghana's first ever infectious disease center. We got the full blessing of the minister right from the idea um, um, sharing. And he arranged a meeting with the president. The president met with us and gave us his full blessings. We engaged the military. In fact, before the military was even reached, government had actually made all its machinery available to us to get this project rolling. Mm. But you remember, it was a lockdown period. So movement was quite difficult. And that's one of the reasons we're relying on the military. They built environment professionals. And we also had contractors who had um, availed themselves or volunteered their services. And that, in particular, was Mendana and Sosa, um, the Portuguese, um, uh, Ghanaian Portuguese construction company. We had a lot of people coming on. This project is a public-private sector project. It's a private sector-led project, but it is a private-public partnership. That is what's delivering this project. It's not something that's solely private. It's not something that's solely government. This is something that's solely Ghana. And that's what people should look at this project as. I have seen the commentary on social media, and I'm pretty disappointed that um, that's a kind of talk that 
we really want to have over a project like this. We should be celebrating Ghana in the, in the success that's being chalked with this project. It's not time for political party competition. It's not time for anybody to want to have of one credit or the other. It's not time for credit sharing. It's time for celebrating the success of the people of Ghana. Mm. And that's where this conversation should end. So guys, wake up. Ghana is bigger than your petty thinking. Is that discouraging uh, the trustees from, because I know that there's a plan to extend this uh, beyond the greater Accra region and go to other regions. Is that still on course? So because of what's happening on social media, this is it. No, 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 not at all, not at all, not at all. I mean, the fund is not an NDC or MPP fund. It's a fund for the people of Ghana, and it has the, the support of the government of Ghana. The fund has the support of His Excellency, the President. It has the support of the people of Ghana. Right from inception, when we started with our feed, the Kayo, we've had people from government, people from the, the, the ruling party, people from the opposition, all supporting our interventions. This is something for the people of Ghana. We are not serving any... We are serving the states, all right? And the, the, His Excellency, the President, has been very, very supportive of what we've been doing. The Honorable Minister has been extremely supportive of what we've been doing. You know, we launched our, our, our fund, and we had the Deputy Minister of Finance and the Deputy Minister of Health present, all right? We've had support from everybody. And this is not about us. We should wake up. This is not about us. It's not about senior. It's not about Mr. Fai. It's not about TJC. It's about what we can all do to support our country navigate these difficult times. That's what it is about. So social media commentary really does not protect any of us, but mm. it's important that people understand what this is about. This project needs the spirit and the support of the people of Ghana. It's not time for uh, political bickering. NDC saying one thing about the project, MPP saying one thing about the project. For God's sake, guys, this is Ghana. Mm. It has the embodiment, the volunteering. It has dedication from the people of Ghana. People have raised their lives, not because of party politics, not because they are going against party politics, not because of anything else, but the people of Ghana. Absolutely. The president was the first person to show, and for the minister, and His Excellency the President, were the first people to show strong commitment to this project. Mm. The military rallied itself showing strong commitment to the project. In fact, before meeting the president, the military had already made itself available. Before the military had made itself available, the built environment professionals, I mean, comprising the Ghana Institution of Engineering, Ghana Institution of Architecture, Ghana Institution of Surveyors mm. as well, yeah. had made themselves available. The Ghana Medical Association, were at the heart of this project. Yeah. They made themselves and volunteered. Mm. People just volunteered for the love of this country. Uh, so let's be in a, in a position this project as one that liberates the ingenuity, mm. the commitment, the dedication of the Ghanaian that we all wish to see. And that is what this is about. It's not about any personality. Okay. It's about Ghana. All right. Um, Senor, we will talk again uh, before the commission on Friday. Uh, so, you know, but it's good that you clarified the issue with what's going on on social media in terms of who takes the credits for this project. Uh, we're not surprised it's an election year, so. <laughs> All right, uh, so Senor joining us uh, via Zoom there on this. Senor, when can we take a tour before the commissioning? Mamavi, you are a project ambassador, and let me take this opportunity <laughs> to celebrate the entire multimedia group for the support that they have given us. I mean, together with the finder, and um, and 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 um, and and Peace FM as well. But the multimedia group has been the fall of this entire project. Without your support, we won't be where we are. You have covered every single phase of this project right from inception. You have supported it with online coverage. You have supported it with radio interviews, free adverts from time to time. You supported it with the challenge, and Mamavi, you supported it with your personality. All right, I, I know my, my brother there too also supported me by, 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 by harassing me every now and then to make sure I, I show up on the, <laughs> uh, the video. So, <laughs> oh, so no, I mean, you guys have been great. <laughs> we need to celebrate you. 25 years in the business, you are the rock of this industry. God bless multimedia. God bless you too, Senor. Uh, we will take time and celebrate you properly before Friday because you've been amazing. 
uh, you know, leading this whole project. We have to recognize that and celebrate that. So more conversations ahead. <laughs> ahead of this commissioning of Friday. This is an exciting moment. He's being modest. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's being modest. We're, we're going to do it big time. Stay with us. Caddy's got show business before we wrap up.